Welcome to one of Simon's free podcast adventures. If you'd like to listen to all of the adventures, you'll find them for sale over on Simon's Adventure Stories. Bandcamp. Com. Here comes Simon. G'day. My name is Simon. I'm an Australian green tree frog. I'm also a fact-finding frog. Thanks for coming to visit me in my rainforest. Now we can go on another adventure together. Oh, how excellent. I was hoping the tree stump would leave us some clues and they're right here. I do love these clues. But sometimes they confuse my frog brain. I'll read them out and maybe your human brain will understand them. Number one. You'll walk through what looks like a white forest surrounded by living connectors that are constantly being electrocuted. Number two. You will be in a world where everything is upside down and back to front. Oh, an upside down, back to front world where things are being electrocuted? This should be an interesting adventure. The only way to find out how interesting is for us to get going. So, let's take in one really big breath together and when we breathe out, we'll be off. Okay, deep breath in. Hold it and breathe out. Here we go. Oh, wow. Looks like this adventure is going to be unbelievably undetectable again. And that super funky secret agent type music is the perfect clue about where we are. Currently 800 metres below the surface. Oh yeah? Now you've definitely worked it out, haven't you? We're back under the ice in Antarctica in an elevator heading down to my top secret underground laboratory. Now approaching one kilometre below the surface in five, four, three, two... One. Welcome to Simon's Top Secret Underground Laboratory. Oh man, we're already here. How cool is that? The temperature in the laboratory is currently 20 degrees Celsius. Describing it as cool would not be accurate. The correct definition would be very mild. Cool temperatures are below 10 degrees Celsius. Okie dokie, artichokey. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, let's get out of here before he starts giving us a weather report. Holy homework. Looks like my computer has been insanely busy since the last time we were here. The laboratory still looks like a gigantic underground igloo full of workbenches and computer monitors but check out the tree and the treehouse in the centre. I reckon someone's been using some pretty fancy fertiliser in here because the tree is almost twice as tall as last time and the treehouse has three storeys instead of two. All I said was I thought people's brains were a bit like a two-storey house with lots of different rooms. Well, my computer got to work straight away and created this incredible treehouse. Last time, she'd only finished the first level, so I can't wait to see what the inside of these two new levels looks like. Hello, Simon. I am pleased that you and your friend have returned for another visit to your top-secret laboratory. G'day, computer. I must say, the treehouse looks completely radical. You must have been working as hard as a bunny at Easter time. If you are hypothesizing that I have invested a large amount of time on this project, then you are correct. I have now completed work on level 2, 
and I am about to commence detailed research and construction on the final level. An increase in the dimensions was necessary to allow for an accurate representation of the multifaceted functions throughout the upper levels of the human brain. Say what? I had to make it bigger. Wow! You can say that again? I had to make it bigger. Oh, sorry, computer. You don't actually have to say it again. It's just an expression. Understood. I will add the phrase to my database for future reference. Oh, look. I just noticed there's a wooden sign hanging from the roof, and it says, Simon's Brain Tree House. Thanks, computer. I've always wanted my own tree house, and now... I've got one with my name on it. You are welcome. Now, speaking of giving things a name, I think it's time you had a proper name. I can't keep calling you computer all the time. It feels a bit cold. Cold? Would you like me to increase the ambient temperature? Not that sort of cold. More like unfriendly cold. You know, the opposite of warm and fuzzy. After all, you are my friend, so I think you should have your own name. Would you like to choose it for yourself? Thank you, Simon. Yes, I would like to do that. Please give me a moment to consider all possible names. Well, if she's checking all possible names, this could take a while. Task complete. Oh. All possible names have been reviewed, and I have made a choice. I would like to be called Chloe. Great choice, computer. Chloe, it is. And I must say... Chloe, you've done a top job with the tree, but I do have one question. How do we get up to the tree house? I just noticed that steps are gone. You are correct. I removed the external steps because, at its new elevation, it would be dangerous for you to climb the outside of the tree. You can now access the tree house from the opposite side. Message received, understood, and copy that, Chloe. We're on our way. Let's go. We need to see what's on the other side of the tree. Jumping jellyfish. This is outrageous. Can you see in your mind that Chloe has built a spiral staircase that goes all the way up to the second floor? But hold the bus! I just noticed something else. It's not just a spiral staircase. It's a spiral escalator. So that means the stairs move by themselves. Oh, let's try out this escalator right now and get this adventure started. You can step onto it first if you like. I just need a second to get my timing right so I can hop onto the moving stairs. <laughs> Got it. I'm right behind you. How hip and happening is this? We're going in circles, but we're getting higher all the time. I love it. This is like a theme park ride, except it's free. You might need to hold on to the handrail to keep your balance, and we are going up quite fast. I must admit... I get a bit emotional when I ride escalators. I find them quite moving. <laughs> Do you know what the technical term is for a broken escalator? Stairs. <laughs> oh, I lost my balance once in a shopping centre and I fell down the up escalator. Oh, that was the most embarrassing two hours of my life. <laughs> OK, we're almost there. right -o. think about stepping off onto the balcony of the second floor. And how's that for perfect? 
The door is just a little bit over to the left-hand side. It has an old brass handle on it and a sign that says Occipital Lobe, the only place to be seen. Hmm, interesting. Okay, in we go. Ah, would you mind closing the door behind us? Oh, thanks. Uh-oh. I hope your imagination is in good shape because it's about to do some very heavy lifting. This place is busier than popcorn in a microwave. It's one of the smallest rooms in your brain, but it does one of the biggest jobs ever. This is actually where you see the world. Yep, that's something not many people know. We're all the way at the back of your brain. And right here is where all the pictures happen. Now, if you put the palm of your hand on the back of your head, it will only be six millimetres from this room. Oh, that's about a quarter of an inch for all my American friends. Now, there's not much room to move in here. Most of it is taken up by a big round table, like the one King Arthur had. But there's no knights in shining armour sitting here. There's eight computer screens on the side nearest us and eight on the other side. And those screens are being watched very closely by 16 tiny workers. Or they're constantly talking to each other about what they can see and how's this for totally bizarro. They're all dressed like Bob the Builder. Really? I'm serious. They're all wearing little overalls and little hard hats and all of their outfits are different colours. This is interesting. Can you see in your mind the ones nearest to us are on the left-hand side of the brain and they all have an L on their hard hat. The ones on the other side of the table have an R on their hat because they're on the right side of the brain. What you're looking at is actually two rooms and they're right next to each other. Well, your brain has two sides, a left side and a right side, and they're joined along the middle. And so you have two of every room. Yep, there's two of every room, one on each side of your brain, and both rooms always work together. And double wow! Here's the best bit of all. All 16 of the computer screens have a beam of light coming out of the back of them. Can you imagine that? And all the light beams meet right in the middle of the table to make a three-dimensional image. And it's changing all the time. It feels like we're watching a science fiction movie, except this is what your brain does all day long. Uh, Chloe, is this like the thing in Star Wars where the little robot guy projects a picture of the princess? What I have created is an interference pattern of random variations in opacity that refracts light into a three-dimensional visual holographic realistic reproduction of the original light field and object. Say what? Yes, Simon. It is like the Star Wars thing. I thought it was. Do you know what they call a robot in Star Wars who always goes the long way round? R2-D tour. <laughs> and what do you call an invisible robot? See through PO. <laughs> and what did the dentist say to Luke Skywalker? 
May the floss be with you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I couldn't help myself. Oh, come on. Let's have a look at what's happening on those computer screens. We'll just have a little peek over their shoulders, but we'll keep our distance. We don't want to interrupt them. These guys are fully focused on what they're doing. Every one of them is getting a different bit of information from your eyes. Oh, perfect. They all have labels on top of their monitors. This one says edges. Oh, yeah. That's all we can see is outlines, I think. This one says movement. Hmm, that looks like some sort of whooshing all over the screen to me. This one here is just shadows. The next one is different colours flashing on the screen. And the next one is angles. Oh, Chloe, none of these screens make any sense. They look like a weird jigsaw puzzle with bits missing. What you can see on the monitors are upside down and back to front signals coming from the eye on the opposite side of the head. Oh yeah, that's right. I don't know who came up with this system, but the way the signals in your brain work is completely bonkers. These left brain workers are getting stuff on their screens from your right eye, while the right brain workers are getting their images from the left eye. And it looks like gobbledygook to us because it's upside down and back to front. (laughs) Hang on a minute. That was one of the clues from the tree stump. A world where everything is back to front and upside down. It was talking about all the signals that come from your eyes into your occipital lobe right here at the back of your brain. One clue down, one to go. I had to have my eyes tested the other day and you'll never guess who I bumped into on the way. Everybody! (laughs) And where would a rabbit get its eyes tested? At the Hoptician. (laughs) Now, believe it or not, this is just the first part of how you see things. These guys have done a brilliant job producing that 3D image, but your brain hasn't even decided what that image is yet. That happens in one of the next rooms. Uh, Chloe... How do we get to the next room? There is a downwards pointing arrow on the left hand wall, indicating that the temporal lobe room is down some stairs on the left hand side. Oh, thanks, Chloe. Left hand side it is. Oh, easy peasy. There are only three steps going down here to a sliding door that says temporal lobe. Come on in. We're always listening. Oh, that makes sense. This room is just a little bit higher than your ears on each side of your head. Let's see what's going on in here. Oi, Chihuahua! How cool is this? I hope your imagination can cope, because this entire room looks and smells like a sheep farm. If you take a deep breath in, you might even get a whiff of the farm. Yep, manure for sure. Nice touch, Chloe. Hmm. You are welcome. That is incredible. There's a whole sheep farm inside this room. The sheep are over on the left-hand side and they've got a border collie running around with them. Okay. But here's the really weird bit. Some workers from the last room keep appearing in front of the sheep and the sheepdog and they show each of them a picture, then disappear again. Sometimes on these adventures, I feel like I'm in a dream, especially the ones that Chloe creates. 
Over there on the right, there's a huge red barn, and its two front doors are wide open. Ooh, that reminds me. We'd better make sure we close the sliding door behind us. There are things flying all over the place in here. The flying things are a mixture of pigeons, owls, and bats. Seriously? Oh, you heard that right. I said bats. Not exactly what you'd find on a normal farm, but this is Chloe's handiwork, and she totally crushes it when it comes to making things up. So you can bet there's a really good reason. I wonder, if you had a homing pigeon for a pet and it died, would it come back to haunt you? <laughs> and what do you call an owl with a sore throat? A bird that doesn't give a hoot. <laughs> and why do vampire bats drink blood? Well, coffee keeps them awake during the day. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, every few seconds, right in front of us, a pigeon, an owl and a bat fly together at the same time in through the open doors of the barn. There's a sign over those doors and it says primary temporal cortex. That's the part of your brain that figures out what you're actually hearing. And can you guess why Chloe picked those three creatures to fly into the barn together? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. Each one of them can hear something different. And deep inside your ears, there is something amazing going on. The sounds that go into your ear all get separated into high ones, in between ones, and low ones, before they even get to your brain. And that's what the birds and bats are doing, delivering the different frequencies of sound to your brain. Pigeons are really good at hearing really low sounds. So, if a pigeon listens to some music, it could sound like this. Owls can hear really well in the middle, so they might hear this. And bats, they can hear super high. So they'd probably hear this. But then your brain puts it all back together and you hear this. Groovy. That's what's happening in the barn. I mean, your primary temporal cortex. It takes all those different frequencies from the birds and the bats and sticks them back together so it can work out what they are. This is how your brain recognises the sound of your friend's voice. Hello, Simon. Or a dog barking. Or a guitar playing. Or a siren in the distance. Now, working out what a sound is... That's only half of the job that the cortex does. Its next job is to work out what the words mean. The cortex in your right brain is the champion at working out the meaning of words and sounds. The one on the left side, where we are now, is top dog when it comes to grammar. It makes sure you put the words in the right order when you talk. Oh. If you're clumsy like me, you might say, No, oh, man, sometimes I feel like I have two left feet. But you wouldn't say, Two left feet I have, 
That sounds like that little green guy from Star Wars who lives in a swamp. Um, what's his name? Um, creaming soda. No, that's that's a drink. Uh, Toyota. Uh, no, that's a car. Toga. No, it's something ancient Romans wore. Hmm. Do you mean Yoda? That's him. Yoda, I meant. <laughs> How did you know that, Chloe? I didn't know you went to the movies. I took advantage of an easily accessible worldwide algorithm that has a database with trillions of entries. By providing the most logical search parameters, I was presented with an answer in a few hundredths of a second. Say what? I googled it. Google? You'll be on Instagram next. I know. We could have lunch together. I'll take a picture, put it on Instagram, and call it Chloe having a bite to eat. Or is that a mega bite? <laughs> I am a computer, Simon. I do not eat lunch. Therefore, I must assume that this was another attempt at being funny. Yep, you would be assuming 100% in the affirmative, correct the mundo, Chloe. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, this side of your brain puts the words, I have two left feet, into the right order. The other side knows it's just a way of saying I can be a bit clumsy sometimes. That's why you always need both sides to work together. Once both sides agree on what a sound is and what it means, they tell the other rooms in your brain upstairs so they can decide what you need to do about it. Do you know what you'd call someone with two left feet? Whatever you like. If they try to catch you, they'll just run in circles. <laughs> Ooh, mamma mia. I almost forgot about the sheep and the sheepdog we saw on the left-hand side when we first came in here. This part of the temporal lobe has the task of recognising people and objects. Scientists have established that sheep can recognise human faces just from a photograph. In fact, they can recognise their handler without any training at all. Nice one, Chloe. I'm going to bet that the sheepdog is there to recognise things. I remember from our dog and duck adventure that a border collie called Chaser can recognise more than a thousand of his toys by their name. You are correct, Simon. In fact, when researchers tested Chaser, they admitted he was able to remember the names of his toys better than they could. Wow! Super smart and super good at recognising things. These guys are definitely an excellent choice, Chloe. Ah, now I know what's going on with those workers. They're showing them pictures of what's been created in the last room and then the sheep and the border collie can help work out what it is. Oh, it turns out that sheep are almost as good as you are at recognising faces. Seriously, right? Uh, that's because their brain processes information an awful lot like yours does. Ooh. And when a sheep recognises a face of someone you care about, like your mum or your dad or your best friend, it sends that information downstairs to your amygdala. It also helps you remember the name of people you know when you see them. If it's a famous person, or like a movie star, or someone on a TV show that you watch, it gets sent upstairs to the other rooms in your brain. I had no idea sheep were so clever. Uh, do you know what you call a very quiet sheep? A sh sheep. <laughs> what sort of car do sheep like to drive? A Lamborghini. <laughs> and what was the sheep doing in the swimming pool? 
the backstroke. <laughs> oh, now they're only showing the sheepdog pictures of things like houses and chairs and cars and trees and books, and it's doing its best to put a name to everything. Then it sends that information upstairs. That dog must know more than a thousand things. The workers just keep appearing, one after the other, and showing him new pictures. Most people think they're seeing and hearing things with their eyes and ears, but you really see and hear things with your brain. Wow. We'll have to stop playing I spy with my little eye and make it I spy with my little brain. Well, in my case, it is a little brain for sure, but yours is much bigger. Oh, check it out. I just noticed there's another door on the right-hand side behind the red barn. That must be how you get into the middle of the brain. The big sign above it says, CAUTION! Electrical forest ahead. An electrical forest in your brain? How groovy. We really need to see that. We're going in. Oh, cool. It's an automatic door. Would you mind standing next to me? I'm so short, sometimes the door sensors don't even know I'm here. Oh, excellent. That worked a treat. Whoa, baby, hand me my sunglasses. It's seriously white and bright in there. Can you see in your imagination that straight ahead of us is what looks like hundreds and hundreds of very bright white tree trunks all packed tightly together and they go from the bottom to the top of this whole room. There's even a little path winding its way through the middle of them, going all the way to the other side. They're not really tree trunks. They're actually the long middle bit of your very famous brain cells. You know the ones, your neurons. The middle part is called the axon. An easy way to imagine a neuron is to think of it like a stretched out tadpole. Their head area at the top has little branches growing out of it called dendrites. That's where the information comes in. The tail part also has some branches for passing the information on to the head of the next neuron. That is what your neurons do all day. Get a message in through their head, send it out through their tail. Let's go for a walk out into the middle of all these white neurons. OK. I reckon we're right in the middle of the brain now. And can you see how tightly packed these white tree trunks, oh, I mean the axons, are? If you like, you can imagine reaching out and touching the sides of them. They don't feel like trees, do they? Trees are mostly hard and rough on the outside, but these are smooth and slippery and a bit soft. This is called the white matter of your brain. Most people think their brains are all grey matter. But white matter makes up more than half of your brain and absolutely no thinking at all is happening here. Really? That's right. This part of your brain is basically just wiring. It's taking electrical signals from the top part to the bottom part and sideways in your brain too. More oh, yeah. I said electrical signals. This is going to sound totally weird, but your brain cells electrocute each other all day long. It doesn't hurt them. It's how they talk to each other and pass on information from neuron to neuron. 
You could say your brain has been retweeting messages long before they ever invented Twitter or Facebook. You've got a super speedy social network right inside your head. And the reason all of these axons are white is that they're covered with a fatty substance called myelin. It's just like the plastic insulation you see on an electrical wire. The myelin coating helps the electrical signals go much faster through those neurons. And I'll tell you something seriously outrageous about your brain, and not many people know this. There's around 160,000 kilometres of this wiring in your brain. Wow. That's enough to go around the whole earth, not once, but four times. And it's all packed inside your skull. Hang on a minute. We just worked out the other clue from the tree stump. A white forest full of living connectors that are constantly being electrocuted. It was talking about the neurons in your brain and how they talk to each other. I always feel better when we work out the clues. Chloe, this brain tree house is just getting better and better. Can we have a peek at the top level? In retrospect, Simon, I may have underestimated the complexity of the human brain. It appears to be one of the most complicated objects in the known universe. I apologise, but there will be a significant delay until I have the top level of the treehouse completed. No need to apologise, Chloe. I reckon you're the only computer on the planet that could have created anything like this. And you know how I love having something to look forward to. I can always go on some other adventures too while I'm waiting. Oh, come on, let's head off home and Chloe will let us know when she's worked out how the top bit of your brain works. OK, let's take a deep breath in. Hold it and breathe out. Here we go. Oh, wow. What a brain-draining adventure. Now, just before you go, I've got one more brain joke for you. Why do brain surgeons wear masks during the operation? So if they make a mistake, no one will know who did it. <laughs> and if your brain ever can't remember something, just send it out for a run. That should jog its memory. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Or as one brain cell said to another... I've got a message for you, but it might be a bit of a shock. If you'd like to own all of Simon's Adventures forever, then head over to simonsadventurestories.bandcamp.com. Thanks for listening.